Hello guys, making this video here. The reason why I'm making this video here because I'm having an issue with my 2003 Chevy Silverado. And the issue that I'm having is this here. My check engine light stays on. Now when I ran my scanner, I got a code. Go here. Okay, recodes. See what we get. Put in there. P zero four five five. Okay, evaporator emission system leak detected, large leak. P0455. That code indicates that I have a large leak in the evaporator system. Now, I'm not a mechanic, nor I do this for a living, but I'm going to share with you guys how I'm going to fix this issue. Now, to correct this issue, you want to check several things, okay? Uh, we're gonna go with the easiest things you want to check first. That will be your gas cap, okay? If your gas cap is loose, not put on right, which in this case it is, um, it may be damaged from this gasket here. Okay, so I'm checking the seal to make sure it is not cracked broken damaged which is not now we'll check for some rust around here okay i have no rust okay it's not damaged it's not cracked it's not broken gas cap is fine always make sure it's tight do three clicks or just make sure it does that next i want to check my purge valve my perch valve is underneath this panel here. And I'm gonna start by removing this cover. And for this, I'm gonna need an eight millimeter socket. Eight millimeter socket, loosen it up. Sorry, loose. A lot easier like this. So, loosen it up. Way and just take it out, put it somewhere where you will step on it, break it, and damage it. I'm gonna lean it right there. Now, this here is what I was talking about. This is the perch valve here. Okay, this line comes from the gas tank brings fumes to the perch valve now the way i would check the perch valve make sure it's working or see if it's defective i would uh i would want to disconnect this plug here okay so this blue plug here disconnect it uh stick the screwdriver here I'm pull this up here I'm lift that up Pull it. There you go. Okay, so it's off. And when once you got it off, you got two little prongs in there. I don't know if you can see the prongs here. Let me get this tester here so I can point them out to you. You got two prongs here. You got one prong here, one prong here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two wires here. I got a red wire and a black wire, okay? It's always best to get these wires with the little alligator clips because they're very useful and it's a lot easier. It makes the job a lot easier, okay? And uh, on one end, I put these two little, usually little nails here. See the little nails here? So, I'm gonna do here, so I'm gonna take the one, the end, that doesn't have the nail, 
hook it up to my negative side of the battery, which is a black cable. Okay. I'm gonna take the other one, take the red one. Hook it up to the positive side. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch the prongs, don't matter which side, doesn't matter what side, okay? And I'm gonna listen for a clicking sound. If I hear a clicking sound, that means this perch valve is working fine. There's no issues with it. Do this while I'm holding the phone here. Listen for a clicking noise. Listen. Here we go. You hear the clicking noise? Let me do it again. Okay, I'm looking for a clicking noise. There you go. You hear it? See that spark? Okay, that means my pressure valve is working, okay? That's how you do that. Next thing we gotta check to see if we got power coming to it. Gotta see if we got power coming to it. For that, you take the plug here, you get your tester. Get these out of the way. Get your tester, okay? Hook it up to the negative side. But turn the ignition without starting the vehicle. See, we got power going to it, but yes. Turn the ignition. And uh, touch the outlets on this female terminal plug. What I'm looking for is when I touch either one of these, I wanna see my tester light comes on. Okay. Hold on. Okay, got it. Okay, now, I'm gonna to touch it and the light should come on, okay? If it doesn't come on, I'm gonna to touch both. Here we go. Okay, the light coming on, okay. So that lets me know that I do have power coming to the perch valve, so. Okay, once you check that, the next thing you wanna check is the canister vent valve. On this 2003 Chevy Silverado, the canister vent valve will be located in between the cab here and the bed. I think that's it right there. Uh, to get to that, the easiest way to do it, I would tilt the bed up. To check the canister vent valve, you would do the same. You could run the wires from the battery to the vent valve to check it. Or you can use a good battery to check it. Or you can remove it and bring it to the front of the vehicle and check it with the car battery. And of course you would do the same for the vent valve. You determine that your vent valve is working. If you hear that clicking noise on the vent valve when you connect the wires to it, then you check the plug to see if you got power coming to it, the same way as I just did the perch valve. And if you got power coming to it and uh, you're, you hear clicking noise, that means your vent valve is good. Okay. If you don't have no power to it, then something's wrong. Check the fuse or see what why you have no power coming to it. That might be your issue there. But anyways, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up a smoke machine there. Look for any smoke leaks next. I'm gonna connect my smoke machine to look for any smoke leaks uh, in the uh, EVAT system. In order to do this, I am gonna connect it to this port here. This is the perch valve. Now, normally this will have a green cap here and I'm gonna have to remove this rod here okay this is the valve rod since i don't have a tool i went on and made my own tool okay i took a screw cut a little groove on it um to fit in here and i'm gonna turn it clockwise this way like this okay that's how you take it off turn it ready. I'm just got to pull it off some pliers. Hold on one second. 
You know those pliers? It's, looks like it's loose already. Carefully, carefully get it, pull it out. Okay. That's the rod you want to get out right there. I'm gonna hook up my smoke machine right there. Be right back. All right, guys, I got my smoke machine ready to go. It's my homemade smoke machine here. Got air pump hooked up to it. I could hook up a compressor to it, but this I'm gonna do it manually with my pump here. Now I got a video on how I make this smoke machine, okay? A couple of videos, you're gonna see it. Okay guys, I see uh, this is the smoke coming out through here. I'm gonna try to show you guys where I'm seeing the smoke. I am seeing some smoke. You guys see that smoke? Make sure I got a leak somewhere. And I think it's coming from the uh, vent valve. See, there's my leak right there. I might have a loose hose at the vent valve. I got a damaged vent valve. So, I'm got to lift up the bed so I can get to this vent valve and look at it more closely. What I'm gonna do is remove all four screws on the driver's side. There are two screws here that I'm gonna remove, two screws here that I'm gonna remove. To remove and loosen the screws for the bed, they are right here. That's one right there. That's an 18 millimeter. And there's another one right there. Right there. So it's one, two, and then behind a tire there, there's two more back there. One and two. After I do that, I'm going to go over to the other side. I'm going to loosen all four screws on the passenger side until they're almost off, but they're going to stay on. Two is needed. It's going to be 18 millimeter socket, a socket wrench, and a long extension. As you see, I lift up the truck bed from the driver's side. I secured it with some jack stands. And all four screws on the driver's side have been removed. All four screws on the passenger side have been loosened all the way, but not removed. All right, I found the evap leak. I found it. It wasn't coming from the uh, canister vent valve. I'm gonna show you guys where it was coming from. So I'm gonna get under there. Let me show you guys where I found the leak. Okay. Now, this is the vent valve here. That's it right there. This is the vent valve. So it wasn't this. The leak was coming from a broken emission control line caused by a broken three-way vacuum hose connector. This line helps air to escape the gas tank when pressure build up and it redirects vapors to the engine. It goes, this is the middle line here of the fuel pump. It goes here and it connects right here. See? This must have happened when I installed my new fuel pump. I might have broke it somehow. So this is it guys. This is what I need. It broke from here. As you can see, the lines are wrapped very tight on this three-way connector. They were so tight that I had to cut them off with a box cutter. And I used pieces of fuel lines to reattach it. Okay, I went and did the fixture. I went to the auto parts store and bought the three-way vacuum hose connector and reattached it. And it hooks up right there. So that's the little part that I just replaced. Little teeth thing here. To reconnect it, I had to use pieces of fuel lines 
to reconnect the three-way connector to the EVAP lines. The connections were tight enough, so I didn't need any clamps. Hook it up to those other, the same EVAP line here that goes all the way to the back of the gas tank. And it goes right there, back of the gas tank. Okay, it runs like that. This little T, little plastic T right here. And this here goes to the fuel pump. So what I'm gonna do now is I uh, drop my bed back down. So I'll keep you guys updated on that, but I'm pretty sure that was a problem there, okay? Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and raise the cold and um, hopefully it'll stay off, which I'm pretty sure it will. It's gonna stay off, it comes back on, and that means that uh, that wasn't my issue, but I'm pretty sure that was the issue there. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, oops, go ahead and erase it. Okay, I've been driving my truck for a week now and the check engine light has not came on. So I believe that the uh, EBAP issue that I was having is fixed. Um, just because you have a check engine light coming on with the code P0455, it does not necessarily mean that you have a bad part. So I recommend that first thing you want to check is the gas cap. Make sure it's tight. Next, um, hook up your smoke machine. Check for any EVAP leaks. Check, check the perch valve like I did on this video. Check the uh, vent valve. See if you see any smoke leaks coming from there. Check for the hoses connected to the charcoal canister. And look for the leaks coming through there. To check the charcoal canister, what you want to do is remove it. And it has small hoses attached to it blow through those hoses to make sure it is not clogged. When blowing through it, the air is supposed to flow freely. If it does not flow freely, then you may have a bad charcoal canister that needs to be replaced. Let me show you guys what I'm... Turn my truck on, watch the check engine light does not come on. Yeah. Check engine light is not coming on. And yeah, I've been driving it for a week now and it hasn't came on, so yeah, it, it's fixed. Okay guys, I hope this video is helpful and it gives you an idea on how to fix your EBAP leaks, big or small. Save yourself some money guys and see you in the next video. Bye.